My name is Pastor Marlon Curtin. This is the Rockway Cathedral. Uh, welcome, welcome to our Sunday service. Welcome to our Sunday service. If you like what you see here, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Our foundational scripture is Matthew 7, verses 24 and 25. Matthew 7, verses 24 and 25. We at the Rockway Cathedral say we're building God's kingdom in you. Be blessed. It's February 5th, 2023. Welcome to online worship at the Rockaway Cathedral. We are so glad that you have chosen to be with us this morning. Whether you're just having a look or seeking a place to worship, we are delighted to have you here. And though we may not be able to meet together physically, that is not going to stop us from rallying together spiritually. Join us online for a time of worship and a message from Pastor Marlon Curtin. Join us in experiencing the joy of singing to the Lord with the gospel duo, Melody and Harmony. Creator of everything, reliable to you, all praise we bring. God of creation, you didn't spare a thing. Justified, glorified are you. Magnified, the earth will honor you. Purified to me, that's what you do. Amplify this praise, is all Allow for you. Allow me to be a vessel for you. Making sure your love always shines through. Like a beacon of a light Through the trials of life Letting your blessings show So all may know I'm gonna tell the world All about you Triune God, Father, Son, and Spirit too Glorious, gracious God Awesome in all your ways The rock in whom I faith will remain I want to serve you all of my days and I want to please you in every way all the choices I make oh every step that I take should be directed by you so I'll wait whoa oh oh on you cause you're the only one who's faithful and true Jehovah Jireh my provider I will rely on you to see me through I want to serve you all of my days and I want to please you in every way all the choices I 
Bible study is back starting on January 10th. Join us weekly on Tuesdays for the series Holiness 2.0. Join us every Tuesday from 7.30 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. on Zoom. Meeting ID 960-2462-6792 and password 271-927. Thank you. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness. We thank you, Lord, for your mercy. We thank you, Lord, for the gift of forgiveness. We thank you, Lord, for the gift of forgiveness. You, you forgive us of our sins if we ask. You sent your son to die for us, substitute our sin, to be a substitute and to pay the penalty for our sin on our behalf. Because of that, we have an opportunity to have and to live a life with the forgiveness of sins. Because of his sacrifice, we have an opportunity to be reconciled with you. So I pray that we, we in our lives, you know, interpersonal lives and in our relationships with friends, our relationships with family, our relationships with colleagues, that we forgive each other, that we extend the same kind of forgiveness that you extended humanity the sacrifice of your son, Jesus Christ, that we extend the same type of grace, the same kind of opportunity, an opportunity to be reconciled with each other where possible, an opportunity to live at peace with each other where possible. Lord, help us, help us to live in forgiveness, help us to extend forgiveness to those closest to us and those in our lives. We pray we pray, I pray, I pray that we live, that we in the body of Christ live a life of forgiveness. In Jesus' name, amen. Today's scripture of the day is taken from Psalms chapter 95, verses 7 through 11 in the Christian Standard Bible Version. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, the sheep under his care. Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as at Maribah, as on that day at Massa in the wilderness where your ancestors tested me. They tried me, though they had not seen what I did. For 40 years, I was disgusted with that generation. I said, they are a people whose hearts go astray. They do not know my ways. So I swore in my anger, they will not enter my rest. The Rockaway Cathedral is a nonprofit organization that is seeking to win souls for the Lord in the far Rockaway community. We especially want to make a difference in the lives of those who are often disenfranchised. However, we need your support to get there. Your act of kindness can be a lifesaver for someone. Remember, richness is not necessary, but willingness is. 
please visit our website at www.therockawaycathedral.com. Click on the blue Donate tab at the bottom of the page, then click Make a Donation. We are also asking that you continue to support us by viewing our service once a week. We're now on Cash App. You can send your donations to Cash Tag Rockaway Cathedral. We thank you for your partnership and continued support. Good morning, good morning, God bless you. Welcome to the Rockwood Cathedral. My name is Pastor Paul. So this is part three. Today's part three of our eight-part series on, on Sabbath rest. Today's message is called Quarreling. Today's message is called Quarreling. So so um, the, the commentaries uh, that, that I read, you know, the commentaries talked about the book of Hebrews. The book of Hebrews is a book of encouragement because the, 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 Hebrew, the book of Hebrews was written to a bunch of Christians who were going through a lot of persecution and they were thinking about giving it up giving up the whole walk with Christ because it was going through so much in terms of persecution. So so the writer was trying to tell them, hey, look, just keep at it, keep going because God has a place for you. Um, and, and the place that he talked about was not a day of the week, not not the Holy Land, but, but a state of mind, the place called Sabbath rest, that you could rest from your works, live a life without anxiety, live a life with peace of mind. And, and, and body of Christ just, you know, now this this can be a very difficult time for many people for any number of reasons. COVID, uh, the effects of COVID, just the uncertainties of of life, post COVID, economy up and down, making jobs, people losing jobs. I, it's a very very strange economy. Inflation, things like that. So there's lots of things going on in society, and some people are still recovering from the after effects of COVID, but. But the message, the message, the, the message that we're trying to get across is not to give up, not to give up on God, not to give up on Jesus, to live by faith. If you continue to live by faith, there's a place waiting for you. Of course, we know about heaven. We're not talking about that. It's a place waiting for you in the body of Christ, a place of, of a restful mind, living a life without anxiety. The Sabbath rest awaits those who persevere toward it. So Hebrews is a book of encouragement. We hope this message on Sabbath rest, we hope this message on Sabbath rest is, is an encouragement to keep on going and to reach further to live in faith so you could reach that place of rest. Today's message is called Quarreling. This is part of our Sabbath rest series. Today's message is called Quarreling, part of our Sabbath rest series. Be blessed. Join us as we welcome the gospel duo Melody and Harmony. to my heart Holy Spirit give me the words that will bring you life words on the wings of a morning the dark night will fade away if you speak to my heart speak to my heart Message of love to encourage me, lifting my heart from the snare. How you love me and care for me, speak to my heart. Oh, speak to my heart, Holy Spirit, give me the words that will bring you life. Words on the wings of a morning, my dark nights will fade away if you speak to my heart. Speak to my heart, Holy Spirit, message of love to encourage me, lifting my heart from the snare. How you. 
love me and care for me. God bless you. Welcome to Rockway Cathedral. My name is Pastor Marlon. Today's message is called Quarreling. Today's message is called Quarreling. It's part of our series called Sabbath Rest. It's part three of our series called Sabbath Rest. The scripture can be found in Hebrews chapter 4, verses 7 through 11. Hebrews chapter 4, verses 7 through 11 from the King James Version of the Bible. Please stand for the reading of God's holy word. Uh, Hebrews chapter 4, verses 7 through 11. Here begin the reading of God's holy word. Again, he limited a certain day, saying in David, Today, after so long a time, as it is said, <clears throat> Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. For if Jesus, for if Joshua had given them rest, they would he, then would he not afterward have spoken of another day. There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. 
For he that entered into his rest, he also ceased from his own works as God did from his. Let us, there, let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest, lest any man shall fall after the same example of unbelief. So far the scripture. Lord, speak through your servant today. Bless your people. In Jesus' name, amen. And by the way, um, if your version says Jesus, you know, Joshua is the, the person that we know is Jesus was born Joshua. That's his Hebrew name. Jesus is the Greek version of Joshua. So if it says Jesus in this version here, it's really speaking about Joshua. Joshua, the, from the book of Joshua, Joshua, the aid of Moses. It wasn't speaking to Jesus as in the Son of God, the Christ. So if it says Jesus here in this version, it really means Joshua. Moses' aid and second in command. So uh, in terms of uh, today, uh, there's a movie called Are We There Yet? There's a movie called Are We There, there Yet? Starring Neil Long and Ice Cube. It's really a, a romantic comedy. So Ice Cube uh, plays a guy, lives in Portland, Oregon, uh, was trying to play baseball in the minor league team out there. He got hurt, uh, but he was covered by insurance. I think he took that money or had some money, opened up a sports memorabilia store, you know, baseball cards, original baseball cards, original signatures, original jerseys signed by certain athletes. It's actually a pretty good business. So he goes out and he buys this brand new Lincoln Navigator, flashy, flashy with all the wheels, bells and whistles. So as he comes in, he sees, at some point in the day, he sees a woman across the street, falls in love instantly. Wow, it's the girl of my dreams, wow. So he asks, his, I think the guy's his business partner, hey, who's that? He says, oh, she's the woman who works across the street. It's some kind of event planning business. So he's about to go talk to her. Then well, as soon as he does that, he sees her two kids run up to her and say, mommy, mommy, mommy. So the backstory is he doesn't like kids. He loves relationships. He's never been married, loves women, does not like kids, just doesn't. And it turns out we find out later that her kids don't want her mother dating anyone. Uh, her mother and their father, their mother, and their father got divorced. The father lives somewhere else. The mother lives with them in Portland. And uh, at some point, you know, one of the boyfriends, the prospective boyfriends comes over and they give him a hard time, chase him away. So they, they want the parents to be reconciled. So they do everything they could to make sure the mother remains without a boyfriend. So they don't like her having boyfriends and he, Ice Cube's character, doesn't like kids. Through a series of events, they meet and she loses a car, so she says, could you bring me to work while my car is being fixed? So they're going back and forth. He's taking them to work and they become friendly, but then she puts him in the friend zone. Uh, he's in the friend zone, they're friends. So he's kind of like, okay, maybe that's good because I don't want to be with her because she has got kids. But you know, they kind of, sort of kind of were trying to fall for each other, but she put the brakes on her. So at some point she has to go to a business meeting in Vancouver, a business meeting in Vancouver. And through a series of events, some, some people couldn't, you know, somebody was supposed to take the kids, he wasn't able to do it. Ice Cube ends up taking her kids to meet her in Vancouver after the business meeting is over. They tried different ways, a plane didn't work, a train didn't work, so he ends up driving. So Vancouver is about five hours drive from Portland, five or six hours drive. So, so uh, as they're driving, you know, one of the, the little boy bullets are, are we there yet? Are we there yet? Great movie, Are We There Yet? Starring Neil Long and Ice Cube. It's about the trip from Portland to Vancouver with a man who doesn't like kids and the kids who don't want their mommy seeing another man. Excellent movie. Let's go to the scripture again. Uh, Hebrews 4, verses 7 through 11. Again, he limited the certain day, saying in David today, after so long a time, as it is said, today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. For Joshua had given them rest, then would he not afterward have spoken of another day? There remaineth therefore a rest of the people of God, 
for he that entereth into his rest, he also hath ceased from his own works as God did from his. Let us labor therefore to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. Uh, the Greek word for harden, you know, the Old Testament is written in Hebrew, New Testament is written in Greek. The Greek word for harden literally means to indurate. Figuratively, it means to render stubborn. According to the Oxford Dictionary, indurate means to harden. It's sort of like something that starts out soft, then gets thick, so like hardened clay. Now, three points today. Point one is, are we there yet? Point one is, are we there yet? So, in many respects, you know, the, the movie involving uh, the, the kids going up there, I mean, it's a long trip. And, you know, he's not used to having kids in the car. He's, he himself is not a father. He doesn't, he doesn't, he's never been a father. He's never been there. Never, never, never had to take care of his own nieces. He's just not into that. Doesn't know anything about that. In fact, doesn't even like it. So here he is because he really does like the girl and he wants to be in her good graces. He has to take these kids up in this car. So one of the things he doesn't know is that sometimes kids have to go to the bathroom before they get into the car. And he doesn't know that. So so he goes through a series of things. You know, one kid has kid has asthma. And, you know, so so he doesn't really know how to deal with and take care of kids because that's not his thing. And, and at some point, you know, the little boy blurts out, are, are we there yet? Now, the, the, the problem with the children of Israel, this, and this is all in the, 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 the Hebrews 4, 7 is constantly talking about the Old Testament, constantly going back to the series of events that, that take place in Exodus. And, and Exodus 17 talks about the story when they were thirsty and they wanted water and they grumbled against Moses because they wanted water. Um, and then, you know, the question that they ask is, did you, did you bring us out here into the desert to kill us? You know, to kill us and our, and our children and our, and our cattle. Why, why are we, why, why did you bring us out here? Did you bring us out here to kill us? But isn't that, isn't that the wrong question though? And, and it's, it's the kind of question that we ask all day. So it's, it's easy to get on these guys case, the people in Exodus 17. It's easy to get on a little kid's case, but but the but the truth is that's kind of how we are. The better question, the better question is, are we there yet? You know, you took us out of slavery, you know, we're wandering in this desert. Where is this promised land? Where is this place that the Lord is gonna bring us to? That's that's a better question, but that's not the question they asked. They asked the question because they were concerned about their personal safety, that they were concerned about eating. They, they, they were concerned about drinking. They were concerned about their personal safety. It's, it's too hot. You know, maybe, maybe at night it was too cold. Certainly they were hungry. Certainly people want to eat. They want water. They want food. They had just gotten mad and quail miraculously. But they were thirsty again. And and this this is the, the essence of life. This is like the Jesus sleeping in the boat and the disciples say, aren't you concerned that we're going to die? You know, the, the essence of, of this story is, is faith because they acted without faith. The, the questions that you have, once you hear the voice of God, God tells you this, God tells you that. God told them that I'm taking you to this place. And when you get to this place, it will be a place full of milk and honey. It will be the place of promise, the, pr the place that I promised your relative Abraham. So, so the question is, that they have and should have along the way is is that what about food what about water did, did you bring us out here to kill us no god brought you to bless you god brought you out of slavery to save you and god's bringing you to this promised land to bless you and the journey is just the journey he's not he didn't bring you out into the desert to kill you that's not what he did. He brought you out of slavery to save you. He's bringing you into the promised land to bless you. He brought you out of slavery, right, to save you, bring you into the promised land to bless you. But, but, but we, they, they, we often get caught up 
in the negative aspects of the journey. I don't have this. I need that. I'm afraid of this. This looks really bad. This looks really scary. This is really sharp. This, this thing is prickly. The sand is hot. The sun is hot. I don't like this person next to me. They don't like me. It's easy to get caught up in the, the things of life. And, and the things that they wanted were not trivial matters. Food is important. Water is important. Safety is important. They, 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 they were always worried about food, water, and safety. But the thing is, God did not bring them into the desert to kill them. God brought them out of slavery to save them. And he, he's going to bring them into the promised land to bless them. So, so body of Christ, remember, remember, remember that the issue in the journey, the issue in the journey is, is not about the things that you're going through. The issue is, well, when is God going to give me this thing that he promised me? When is God going to give me this thing that he promised me? Are we there yet? When is this going to happen? When is that going to happen? It's not about the little things that happen in life. Because, because one of the problems that, that happened is he called that, he called one of the places that they, were, that they were at, he called it a place of testing, a place of quarrel. He, he kept talking about, you, you're, these guys, they tested me. And they tried me. They tested me and they tried me. And they were quarreling quarreled with me. quarreling Meribah and Masa. That's in Psalms 95. Psalms 95 talks about the same story. Exodus 17, Psalm 95, Hebrews 4, the same story. And the places that Moses referred to, they were called Meribah and Masa, a place of quarreling and a place of testing. And, and that's what happens by the Christ. When you harden your heart, when you take your eyes off the prize, when you take your eyes off the promises of God and focus on your situation, you no longer remember the grand and lofty promises that God has promised you. You focus on the small things. My feet hurt. I'm, I'm sweaty. I'm, I'm hot. The, feet, you know, the sand underneath my feet is very difficult. These are the things that we focus on. You start to quarrel. And quarreling, it turns out, quarreling with God, Quarreling with the promises of God. Quarreling sort of leads to you forgetting about the promises of God. It's not a process that happens right away. Indurate means to thicken. It's sort of like you're mixing cement and eventually it just gets stuck. If, if you continue to quarrel about things that have nothing to do with the promises of God, if one continues to quarrel about things that have nothing to do with the word of God, the promises of God, it's at some point, you won't even remember why you're even traveling. You'll just be living a life quarreling and testing God. Point two, why are we here? And remember, they said, did you bring us out into the wilderness here to kill us? Now, one of the one of the consequences of this behavior is, you know, because they can't go after God, they go after the messenger. So in, in, in Exodus 17, if you read Exodus 17, Moses is reporting back to God, hey, these people want water. These people want water. What can we do? Can you help us? And that's when God tells them to go to the rock, strike the rock, and water will come out from the rock. So, so before that process, before this happens, when Moses is telling God about the problem, before he's given the solution to their situation, and there's always a solution because he didn't bring them out there to kill them. He brought them out there to save them from slavery and to bring them to a place of blessing. He's not out there to kill people. But before, the, before God gives Moses the solution, he says, I'm afraid that these people are trying to stone me. That These people are actually out to get me. Not only were they grumbling, they were really upset about these things and and sometimes and and this this is a word for this is a word i guess for, for churches and pastors so sometimes when you know a pastor is supposed to go before the lord lay before god moses laid 40 days and 40 nights before god and got the vision of god for the people in the ten commandments and the other commandments and gave them to the people that's what 
pastors are supposed to do, labor before God, to hear from God, to give to the people, to labor before God, lay before God, listen before God, listen to the Holy Spirit in them, and let God speak to them so that they could speak to the people. And sometimes, you know, when, when, when you're on a journey, you have that campaign, you have that thing that you want to do, you have the missionary journey to Honduras or the, you know, the, the missionary, the medical missionary effort to Mauritania or the inner city uh, uh, ministry or the rural ministry, whatever the vision that the pastor has that he got from God, whatever the program is that the Lord has laid on his heart. Sometimes... You know, sometimes the people, out of out of impatience, they 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 really, you know, if they don't see things going the way they should, or they're concerned about the way things are going. Sometimes the tendency is to attack the messenger. Just like Moses was, he felt like he was being attacked because people stopped being concerned about going to the promised land. They were con so concerned about the small things, right? These other things that God can clearly take care of that they forgot all about the mission. They were asking the wrong question. And because of that, they were really, really upset at Moses. We know later on they wanted to stone Moses. We know later on they wanted to take, depose Moses, pick another leader, go back to Egypt. It didn't come to that yet. But these are events leading up to it. This is why God said, none of those people who are over, who are over a certain age not a single one over the age, I think it was age of 40. I, I, I don't remember what, 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 I think it's 20. None of you will get into the promised land because you're always complaining about everything. You, you're not only quarreling, which is quarreling against me, God. You're hardening your, your heart to God. But you're attacking the person, the vessel, the very person that I speak to face to face. Right, who's who's interceding on your behalf every day? Oftentimes, the messenger and Moses is considered to be the first pastor. They get attacked as well. So, 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 body of Christ, if if your pastor has a vision f from God for you, a vision from God for the church, the issue is, what can I do to help? And, and and don't get caught up in, you know, you know, yeah, you got to deal with this and that, the, the, the thing. But the, the, the overall question is, are we moving from slavery into the promise land? Are we moving from one place to the next? Maybe you don't know how long it's going to take. Maybe it's taking longer than you thought. Maybe things that seem to be going a little bit awry or amiss. But it's not a time to sit there and attack the leader. If you listen to the voice of God, don't harden your hearts. Remember the promises of God. Jesus is sleeping. Master, don't you care that we die? I mean, how did they say that? Did they were they like friendly when they said that? Were they were they happy when they No, I'm sure they were pretty angry when they said, in spite of all the things that Jesus had done for them up to that point. All the things and the miracles he'd shown them and all the discipleship he'd given them. In that one moment, they kind of lost faith. He woke up and said, oh, you have little faith. If you lose faith, sometimes you get caught up in the storms of life, not having the water, not having it being too hot. The sand on your feet are too hot. It's easy to get caught up in those little things and, and forget that I'm on my way to the promised land. I'm on my way from one part of the lake to the next. And I have to trust the voice of God that he, and the promises of God and the messenger of God that they will get us there in a safe and in a timely fashion. It's important, body of Christ, to live these journeys with faith. Live by faith. Live by faith. Because that's how you overcome it. You have to understand that God can overcome these things. God can give them water. And he did. Moses struck the water, the rock with the with the staff, water came out. Prior to that, he had given them manna and quail. Prior to that, he stopped up the Red Sea. Prior to that, Pharaoh agreed to let them. So, so there's a number of miracles that have to happen in order for, and later on, the Amalekites attack, and the Lord defends his people from the Amalekites. 
There are things that are going to happen along this journey. There are things that are going to happen along this journey. Remember the promises of God. Because if you remember the promises of God and live by faith, you could walk that journey, even though it's not going to be easy, even it's going to be difficult. If you fight for it, if you fight for the Sabbath rest, if you fight for the place that God has for you, that's when we get it. But if we quarrel and test God, if we quarrel and test God, like these people, their kids got it. Joshua got it. Caleb got it. None of them got it. Cannot live a life by quarreling and harden your heart and testing God. Live by faith. Fight in faith. Point three. Open your heart. When they started taking this trip up to Vancouver, you know, he, his heart was hard against ha his having anything to do with kids. He thought that they were disruptive and they would mess up his relationships, his relationship with any woman that he cared about. And he cared about this woman. And the kids, their hearts were hard against any man in their life other than their dad. Because they so wanted their dad and their mom to get back together, but they didn't realize because they're kids that that ship had long sailed. And through a series of events, their hearts began to soften toward each other. His heart was softened to these kids. And these kids, their heart was softened to him. So by the time they got to their mom, their hearts were knitted together. And, and he really was into these kids and they really w were into him. Um, so, so having a, a hard heart is a thing that they brought into the situation. You know, he had one, they had one. Different reasons, but they were clashing, constantly clashing. It wasn't until later on when they started looking at their situation a little bit differently. And they looked at the other side differently, that they saw the commonality and the kind, they saw the good qualities of the other person. They saw the good qualities in him, and he saw the good qualities in them. And, and over the course of time, they became bonded together because their hearts were no longer hard. And that's, that's how it should be with us. We don't have like this, you know, mountain that we go to, to listen to and hear from God. We don't have, there's not like one pastor that speaks for God and, and, and one pastor speaks for everybody on the face of the earth. What we have is we have the Bible, we have the word of God. You know, wh whether your church is five members or, or 5,000 members or 50,000 members, right? We all have the same voice of God. The voice of God is the word of God. And and what this, what this scripture says is don't be like them. When they heard the word of God, they hardened their hearts. Keep an open heart to God. Always keep an open heart to the word of God. Do not harden your heart to the word of God. This this is now the voice of God in your life. Yeah, yes, your pastor has a vision for God for that church and that community. He he has he or she has a vision for your faith community. Right? So 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 they go to God, get the vision from God. And there it is, and they all enlist your services to go from slavery into the promises of God. But but you in your own life, you in your own personal life, in your own personal devotions, in your own home, whether you have family or not, you also are privy to the voice of God. And the voice of God is in the word of God. So so when we hear and read the word of God, keep do not harden your heart to the to God's word. Don't Take this and, and reject that. Don't reject that and take to keep an open heart to all aspects of the word of God. Because, because in so, when we hear the words, we, we, we can stand on the promises of God that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thy heart, God shall, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth and believe in thy heart that Jesus is Lord, thou shalt be saved. That's a promise of God. Blessed are those that Walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, but sitteth, but a seateth in, 
Blessed are those that walk not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on it doth he meditate day or night. Blessed is that person. Though I walk through the vow of the shadow of death, I will, I will fear no, no evil. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. These are the promises of God. This is now for you, the voice of God. Open your heart to the voice of God. Open your heart to the words of God. Open your heart to the mind of God. All those things can be found in his word. This is now our desert experience. This is now you were a slave when you were unsaved. You were a slave in Egypt. But through a series of events, now you are now saved. And you are on your way, not to heaven, because your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. When you die after, after the judgment, you will be in heaven. I'm not talking about that. But on earth, there are promises of God, plans to prosper you, to forgive you, to protect you, to build you up. Those are the things that are in the Word. Those, that is now the voice of God. If you keep an open heart, to the voice of God. We can achieve the promises of God that he has for us on earth. And one of the promises that he has is a place of rest for us. Walk by faith. Live in faith. Pray about the things that you need along the journey. Keep an open heart. Don't harden your heart like the Exodus 17 folks did. Don't harden your heart like the movie characters did in the beginning. Because if you keep an open heart, you can achieve and receive God's promises. Not in the next life, but in this life. That's it. You're here today. You've never accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life. You've never accepted him as Lord and Savior. If that's you, pray this prayer after me. Lord, I'm a sinner. Please forgive me my sins. I know that you came for me. I know that you lived for me. I know that you died for me. And on the third day, he rose again from the dead. I confess right now with my mouth that you are Lord, and I believe in my heart that you rose from the dead. Therefore, today, I'm saved. My name is Marlon Curtin. This is the Rockaway Cathedral, building God's kingdom in you. Go in victory, go in peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Lord, we acknowledge that you are our God. You are a God that is true to your promises and thankfully your grace and mercy are still open to us today. Father, we live in a time that is filled with problems and we are weary of trying to solve them on our own. We confess that we have been disobedient and have used many worldly avenues to find rest, but they have never provided the true rest that they promised. Today, Lord, we are turning to you for true Sabbath rest. We repent of our disobedience. Please forgive us. Strengthen us to obey you and walk in your will so that we can truly enter into the rest that only you can provide in this, our worldly walk. We pray this prayer in the name of our Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks for worshiping with us today. We pray that you were blessed by the word brought to us by Pastor Marlon. Go in God's grace until we meet again for Sunday service, Tuesdays for Bible study from 7.30 to 8.30 p.m. And be sure to check out our website for further information about our ministry. God bless you. And remember, you are dismissed from this service, but never dismissed from God's presence.